Hi there! In this video we wanted to go over some uh, additional techniques of scheduling social media content. So um, the most basic way of scheduling something within social report uh, is to click on compose button right and simply design the message and schedule. So however there are some other options here which have their own advantages. Um, so one option would be to go into the advanced sort of publishing tab here and click on schedule a post. Um, and you get this pop-up coming up which offers you essentially to organize your content. So organizing social media content kind of goes to talk, kind of goes to the, uh, you know, content strategy, right? So as you are, you know, putting out content onto your social media profiles, chances are this kind of content always falls within certain categories, right? So these categories can include, like, for example, in our situation, marketing content, new reports content, service updates, our blog content, right? So anytime we put up an article, we effectively put that into that particular quote-unquote bucket, right? Or into that content category, right? Or as you begin to schedule, right, you can create new content groups, right, if you are in the process of, you know, putting out a completely, you know, new message. So the benefit of doing so is that there are a number of them. Uh, first of all, you can always go to your content performance. And this report in this area in general, right, is going to give you a fairly detailed analysis, right, of how well your content groups perform, right. Um, and you can easily figure out what kind of content is actually outperforming or underperforming, right, based on the fact that you just organized it, right. So instead of going out and post by post trying to make sense, right, of the content you sort of publish, instead everything is here, right. So you can easily see how much of each type of content you've published, how many clicks it generated, what was the click proposed, what was the engagement, engagement proposed, and even conversions, right? What kind of content is actually driving purchases, right, on your website or driving registrations or, you know, however you've decided to determine, you know, design your conversions, uh, which is some, you know, optional within our system. All right, so effectively, that's one benefit, right? So now you are able to kind of compare different content side by side. It also has some logistical benefits as well. For example, if I go to my calendar, right, given the fact that I can actually color code my content groups, right, I can easily spot, right, content on my calendar being from different categories, right? So, and I can even filter, right? So I can go in and say, uh, you know, show me all my marketing content, right? Let's say for this month, I apply a filter, there's only one post, right? I can go in and say, show me all the blog content, you know, for this month, right? So I can easily spot the different content and the color coding comes from the fact that you can actually navigate to that specific content group, click on it and sort of change the color that way. Um, for example, I'm just gonna change it back to this, this color. Uh, you can even color code it right from your uh, performance report. Uh, that's another possibility. So in general, again, the idea of the content groups is to organize, organize your content. Uh, has additional logistical benefits of being able to see things and categorizing is a fairly sort of uh, you have a lot of flexibility with that right do you want to categorize it based on uh, the type of content do you want to categorize it based on purpose uh, maybe you categorize it for every month of your content as kind of part of different campaigns and that's your category right while it is an optional feature within social report again you can always schedule using the compose button without it Right? I think in time, you would appreciate the fact that you can indeed sort of understand much deeper right, how well your content performs, as well as gives you an extra logistical way of organizing your work. Right? Uh, maybe different people work on different uh, type of content, right? different type of content, maybe requiring different kind of workflows. Again, uh, content groups. Um, and uh, this is uh, what this video was about. We wanted just to introduce you to content groups, what they are. And uh, if you have any questions, let us know.